Hi, it's Steve from Part Select. Today we're going to show you how to install an ice maker in your refrigerator, and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a quarter inch nut driver, a putty knife, and a utility knife. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this installation, the first thing we're going to do is to disconnect the power to the refrigerator, pull it out far enough that we can access the back of it, as well as have access to the freezer, so we'll want to empty any items out of the freezer. We'll next start by opening the freezer door fully, removing any items that are on that shelf, and we're going to remove the support for the ice cube tray. Let's hold it in position with two quarter inch hex head screws. Just completely remove and discard that. We're next going to remove the cover over the fill tube access and wire harness access. And again, it's a quarter inch hex head screw. So remove the screw and then we'll squeeze both the top and the bottom of that cover to disengage little locking tabs on the bottom and two that are on the top. We can then pull that away and you'll see that there is a wire harness pushed into a little receptacle on the back of that. We can simply just release that little locking tab on the side and slide the cover off and we can discard that. Now next we'll take our putty knife and we're going to remove a little plastic cover for mounting screw on the side that is used to level the ice maker once we have it installed. So just take your putty knife and put it in underneath the edge of that plug so you can get it out far enough to grasp it with your fingers and then pull it completely out of the liner and we can discard that. Now next we'll take the screw that we removed from the back cover we're going to reinsert that into the opening just below that fill tube and to the left. Now some models will not have that uncovered fill tube in place. There is one that comes with the kit so if your model does not have this in place you will be using one that is supplied with the kit. And some models of refrigerators have a different cover in place there as well and the instructions are included to tell you how to remove that. Now our next step will be to take the quarter inch hex head, three quarter inch long screws and we'll install those in the two upper holes where we'll remove the ice cube tray support. And we'll just put them in part way, leave about three eighths to half an inch protruding and then we'll also take one of the half inch long quarter inch hex head screws and it will be used in the bottom location once we've mounted the ice maker in place. Now when installing our ice maker the first step will be to locate the wire harness on the ice maker, match it up with the harness that protrudes from the upper left corner You'll note that harness connector has one pointed edge on it that will mate with the one on the actual ice maker itself. And also there is a fill cup at the back of the ice maker that we need to line up with the fill tube that protrudes from the back wall. So we'll first put the wire harness connector together and make sure it's pushed on far enough that the actual locking tab on the side of it engages. lift the ice maker into position and we're going to hang these two support brackets over the two screws that we've installed on the side. And first we'll make sure that we line up that fill tube with the cup at the back of the ice maker. Make sure it fits into that opening. And then hang the ice maker in place. We'll tighten those two screws. 
Now it is important that the ice maker be level, so first of all make sure that your refrigerator is level, and then if required to level the ice maker, you can manipulate the adjustment between those two screws on the side, because you need to tilt front to back. And on the bracket on the side, there is some movement, or it's a slotted opening in that, so that will allow us to adjust for any tilt side to side. So we'll next install that half inch screw. And then the arm on the side here is the shutoff lever in the up position. The ice maker is turned off. In the lower position it is turned on. And as it goes through a harvest that lever will lift up on its own. The ice cubes will dump. Then the lever will come back down on top of the ice cubes. And if there are too many cubes in the basket, it will shut itself automatically until you remove some of the ice cubes. You'll note that one side of that bin is lowered, and that's the side that goes in underneath the ice maker. You need to make sure that that stays in that position, tight up against the back wall, tight up against the left hand side. Now we'll proceed to the back of the refrigerator to install the water valve. Now our next step is to install the water line on the back into our fill tube. And you'll need to check your model in comparison with the instruction manual. If yours already has the fill tube installed in the cabinet, you can disregard these particular pieces, the fill tube extensions and the fill tube itself. If your model does not have that, you'll need to select the correct size extension for your model and also whether or not you will need to install the foam gasket on the back. Now next we're going to install the water line to the fill tube. And rather than have the valve hanging in the way here, we're going to disconnect it from the tubing. There's a little collet on the outlet of that valve. We simply depress that as in pull it directly into the valve and hold it there and then the tubing will just pull out. When we go to reinsert it, we're simply going to push it all the way in, pull it back out and it will lock in place. So again, just depress that little collet and pull the tube out and we'll set the valve aside for now. Now there's probably a plug in the fill tube if your model had the fill tube on it. We're simply just going to pull that out and discard it. Then in the accessory kit, there's a little metal sleeve that we're going to slide into the end of the tubing and fully depress it all the way in so it's flush with the end of the tubing. And we're going to take a clamp and you'll note on that clamp there is a round hole on one side and the opposite side is threaded to match up with the sheet metal screws that come with the kit. So we're going to take one of those half inch screws, we're going to insert it through the round hole first and then into the threaded portion. We'll just tighten that enough to catch the screw. Then we're going to insert the tubing into the fill tube, press it all the way in until it bottoms out. Then we can slide that clamp completely over that fill tube. And then tighten the screw. Just give that water line a tug to make sure it's tight enough. And next, we're going to install the little clips that will hold that water line. I'm going to have to run that down the right hand side at the back of the cabinet. So we'll center those two between the valve and the fill tube in about these positions. And they have a peel and stick adhesive on the back. So we're simply going to peel that little strip off the back and attach them directly to the back of the cabinet. You might want to just wipe that cabinet clean to make sure that there's no dust there that would interfere with the adhesion and then attach them. Now if you follow the instruction manual, you will note that it states if your model has a metal back panel on it and this small access panel on the right hand side of it, that that's all we need to remove is this one screw that holds that access cover in and then discard the cover. If yours has the cardboard back, we'll need to remove all seven screws that hold that cardboard back in place. 
on this one we can discard that cover. Then we're going to reach in here until we find the tan and white wires that go to the connector for the ice maker fill valve. Locate that and pull it out. Now next we'll prepare the valve to mount on the cabinet. We're going to install two screws and according to the instructions we will use the machine thread screws in these two holes and that will hold that valve in position. The solenoid will go into the opening and tuck inside of the cabinet. Two screws mounted on the right hand side. Our outlet fill tube will connect through the bottom back up through this little bracket to hold it in place. And then that allows us access for our input water supply from your wholesale supply to be connected on the top. So we'll start by pulling that harness out again and fully insert that onto the solenoid. We'll take our water line and make sure that we have enough length. You can actually tuck that into that clip first. We see how much room we have, get a rough idea of the length, and then we're going to cut that excess tubing off. So we'll take a nice sharp utility knife and we'll make a straight cut right through the tubing. Fully insert that tubing into that collet. And as you remember, we'll just push it all the way in until the bottom's out and give it a sharp tug. Make sure it's locked in place. Then we can lower the valve into position. Next, take the quarter inch screws. We'll start with installing one of them. Just tuck the excess tubing down inside, out of the way. Now you may need to take the original screw that held that cover on just to start into that opening. It may be filled with some insulation. Just use that to punch the hole through it and then install the machine screw. And position the valve flat against the cabinet. Tighten the screws completely. The next we're going to Add a clamp on the side here for our inlet water supply tube. So just remove the screw that is already in position and we'll take that little clamp, insert the screw through it and put it back in place. We're now ready to run our copper supply line through that opening and that will keep it from getting kinked behind the refrigerator. We're now ready to install that inlet water supply, push our refrigerator back into position, reconnect the power, and our repair is complete. I told you it was an easy job. Thanks for watching and good luck with your repair.